chair is so sweet in here. I figured I would kind of do like my 2020 recap and normally how everybody does it on Instagram, which I do every year. And I told myself I was not gonna do it this year. And then my next option was making a YouTube video about it. So you're welcome, Instagram. I'm not gonna be bothering you guys with my useless 2020 recap, but YouTube, you guys get it this year. So the tea is piping hot. Let's begin. I dyed my hair. Did anybody notice? No, it's fine. In January, February, March. I hope nobody gets that reference. And if you do, we have probably the same New Year's resolution, which is to stop going on TikTok all hours of the day. I can't control myself. I'm literally on there for hours. Like you can be watching three videos. The next thing you know, it's 2 a.m. And then what are you supposed to do? What are you supposed to do? When I scroll all the way up my camera roll to January, it feels like it's taking me about a year, which it has, obviously. But let's start New Year's of last year. New Year's of last year, my friends and I all got together. It was a time before Corona, crazy to even think of that. And we all got together and we went to a New Year's party. And then my friends and I got split up and I was the only person at the party and my friends went to another party. Um, I had a good time. I had a good time at the New Year's party. I really wish my friends were with me, but they went to a completely different other party, which was fine. I can handle myself. January was kind of like a, I don't know. It was just sort of like a whatever month. I feel like I can't even remember anything from January. It was just kind of like a blur and it feels so long ago because life before Corona doesn't even like feel real or that it ever happened. But then in February, um, it was my birthday the 4th, but we kind of started celebrating my birthday all week. We started on the 1st, which was so much fun. All of my friends and I went to dinner and then we just like went out and had such a good time. And I remember we all stayed up until like 5 a.m. talking that night. And then on the 4th, on my actual birthday, I got to spend my birthday with like my family and my friends and all of my friends actually surprised me um, on my birthday in the morning. They all like left school in the morning and came to surprise me and it was so cute. Um, and I just thought that was the sweetest thing ever. But then when you kind of scroll down from February, after my birthday and, and hanging out with family and friends, was probably the highlight of my 2020, or one of them. 2020 has been a hard year to say the least. And I think that's kind of a universal thing. Everybody is going through completely different things in 2020, but there's this kind of like universal feeling throughout everybody. And as hard as 2020 was for everybody, I feel like this was the most connected people have been on certain topics and on certain situations that I think is super important. So as much as like awful things have happened in 2020, which they definitely have, I think it just showed people that there is a possibility for people to unite and come together when it really matters most. If anything, anybody's gonna remember from 2020 is obviously a shit year, but the year that a lot of people really came together and, you know, stood up for what they believed in. And I think that's really, really important. And I'm honestly, I'm, I'm just proud. I feel like as an 18 year old and living in California and now being able to vote this year and everything, I just feel this was a really important year for me to kind of open my eyes and kind of see what's happening in the world. And I think that was kind of it for everybody that kids my age were like, you know, we should probably start paying attention. And I feel like it just really opened everybody's eyes. So back to what happened in February. In February for my birthday, I partnered up with Alice and Olivia, which is a clothing brand that I wear all the time. I love everybody who works there. Um, and we, hosted a benefit in honor of my 18th birthday for Children's Hospital and we raised so much money for the kids and it was honestly just like such a fulfilling 
um, exciting thing to do for my birthday where normally you kind of just have a party and whatever and it just felt really good to do something with my birthday and kind of put it to meaning and help other people while you know celebrating something exciting so the children's hospital 18 slash my 18th birthday slash fundraiser slash friendship get together slash shopping spree slash was so much fun and I and I have pictures from this that like I'll never forget and everybody who came just has my heart forever and it wasn't until quarantine officially started in March and it was the day after my mom's birthday so we all kind of celebrated my mom's birthday very low-key it was just our family and it was literally the following day that everything shut down like this and I remember thinking, you know, it was only for two weeks or it was only for a couple weeks. And as every week went on, quarantine kept extending and more things were closing. And thankfully my dad got to stay open as like he was deemed essential business. Um, so my dad was still going to work every day, but it was definitely really scary because nobody really knew what was going on and what the severity of the situation was until it was too late but in the beginning of quarantine I'm not sure if anybody else can relate to this I thoroughly enjoyed staying home and doing nothing um, one it was the safest option Two, helped everybody around me by you know not seeing anybody three I got some alone time Four, I watched a lot of Netflix five I started baking so much like so much that it was all I wanted to do. I remember in just the beginning of quarantine, I was like whipping up every morning. I was up at the crack of dawn, icing cakes, frosting cupcakes, filling cream puffs, whatever it was, I was like a machine. And I think it was kind of like my way to cope um, because obviously not being able to see my friends and everything was kind of sort of taking a toll on me mentally. And I think baking was just my easiest way of coping. And um, I just find it really comforting and it was so much fun. So baking was a big part of 2020. And I don't remember what month specifically, but I opened up my, my little Instagram shop bakery for No Kid Hungry, which I thank you guys so much for the amount of people who were messaging me and wanting to order. And unfortunately we could only deliver, you know, within a couple mile radius in California but I wish I could have you know sent it to you guys everywhere you were but for everybody who ordered we raised over five hundred six hundred dollars in a span of I want to say two months which to me being a one woman bakery uh was pretty exciting and it was definitely very stressful but I'm so glad it's going to a good cause and it was just another way to kind of like lift up people's spirits in such a hard time. Let's fast forward. Um, Netflix had reached out to all of us to kind of start making our own videos for their YouTube channel since we couldn't do like our normal promos, obviously because we couldn't come into the studio. So they kind of sent us a bunch of different videos to do and it was so much fun because the cast and I would FaceTime every day to figure out how we're going to do these videos there were so many different fun things to do so you can watch all of those videos on their youtube channel don't watch the workout one though please don't don't do it don't do it whatever whatever it takes do not watch the workout one but you can watch everything else you can watch my baking one. Oh my god i had a i had a major bobby flay moment and i got to make a mild rescue cake which was very exciting I think it's Netflix Futures YouTube channel. So much fun. The summer was just trying to be obviously as safe as possible and relaxing and just kind of hanging out with my family and just spending some quality time together, which I think has been the best thing that's come out of quarantine. Then I had my British Thoughts magazine cover shoot, which was like my first sort of thing back at work, which I was very excited for. Everybody was very safe, but I was also just really excited to be doing a cover shoot, especially because I hadn't worked in so long and I hadn't, you know, been wearing anything other than sweatpants and no makeup. So it was just really nice to be glam and just get back into work. And it was so much fun. 
And then I had some more press sort of starting for Malibu Rescue because Malibu Rescue was coming out August 3rd. Um, I think doing press um, about Malibu Rescue is always so much fun because I love talking about it and I love talking about our experiences on set and with the cast and everything. So to me, doing press is almost, almost, very close, almost as fun as filming. After I started doing press for Malibu Rescue, what was the date? August 4th. We were on Mercy was coming out August 4th. On August 4th, the day that Malibu Rescue 2, the next wave was perform premiering, I had to film the Coheed and Cambria Jesse's Girl 2 video. And I remember getting asked to do that and I was so excited. Um, but, you know, I was having my family and like a few friends over to watch the movie. Everybody knew that we had a wrap because I had to, you know, go back to watch the movie. I hadn't seen it yet. I was so excited. I've only really seen parts of it. And filming the Coheed and Cambria video was honestly one of the biggest highlights of 2020. One, I've never done a music video before. Two, I had a lip sync and I'm the worst singer ever, but even lip syncing just like made me cringe, but it turned out so cool. Three, I got to hang out with Rick Springfield. Ask your guys' moms, they'll be pretty jealous. Four, I got to work with two of my best friends. We went to high school together and um, one of my friends was a producer and the other was a DP. So it was kind of like a full circle moment. Like we're out in the real world doing something together when we used to make little movies when we were um, in high school, so that was amazing. Filming that video was so much fun. I mean, I really can't put it into words. It was one of the best experiences ever and so cool and the video was awesome and I'm just really glad that I got to be a part of it. And honestly, that was probably the greatest day of 2020. I woke up at like 6 a.m., filmed a music video for 12 hours, had the best day ever, and then came home and got to watch Malibu Rescue the next week. I just remember going to sleep that night thinking like, it can't get any better than this. Um, until it did, uh, the next day when I woke up to like 30 missed calls from Brie and texts from our group chat and everybody's going crazy and I remember I was half asleep checking my texts like, what is everybody talking about? And the fact that we were number four on all of Netflix, but we were the number one movie on Netflix. I mean, it literally blew my mind. I'm pretty sure I cried hysterically that morning. It was just so fulfilling and so exciting. And one, just hearing all the feedback from people, Malibu Rescue is supposed to be something that's super uplifting and you're supposed to have a good time and you can have a laugh and spend time with your family or your friends or whoever you're watching it with. And just like really just, it's a feel good movie. And to see the reaction from literally the entire world was so surreal and so insane to even think about that we are on the top 10 list in almost every country. Um, and just reading your guys' messages, saying how happy the movie made them and, you know, it made them forget about Corona for a second and just kind of immerse themselves and be at the beach with us was honestly like, the most heartwarming part of it all. Just when I thought it couldn't get better, we had a billboard in Times Square. We had a billboard in Times Square. We, we had a bill. I, it, my, our fate, the, what? What? It just felt really good to finally have people kind of um, acknowledge all the work uh, that goes into Malibu Rescue, not just from the actors, because we're just one part of it. It's our crew and our editors and our directors and our writers. Everybody in every department kills it on that show that even our art department was just insane. Like the way that they set everything up the way that everybody does their job to 200% into the max finally kind of like paid off and I'm, I was just really glad to see everybody kind of get the acknowledgement that they deserve. After Malibu Rescue and that all sort of settled down, life was as normal as it was gonna be. It was important for all of us to kind of go through this. I know me personally, like I've learned so much, not just about myself, but just about the world because of this and you kind of start to realize what's actually important to you and 
what you value and what matters to you and who matters to you. Because if this year has taught anybody anything, it's, you know, after spending time apart and, you know, going through all these crazy things, it's you realize who who is really there for you and who you want to be there for and who matters. And I don't know, as hard as everything has been, I think we've all definitely learned some valuable lessons, which they could all be different for everybody. I know my situation is not the same as somebody else's, which I also want to say I have had quarantine for the past nine months extremely easy compared to what is happening in the world and compared to what other families and other people that I know are going through and I don't want to glamorize 2020 at all but I also do think it is important to sit back and reflect on the good things that have happened and maybe come out of this year if anything and it's the little things to hold on to I think um, 2020 was a year of people finding new hobbies and finding different things that they liked and you know they didn't know that they liked before so I feel like uh, as hard as 2020 was there's there's always a silver lining and I think it's important to think about those things and we're in you no know, almost 2021 going into 2021 I'm just I'm excited and I'm ready and look, I don't want to be jinxing anything, but I'm ready. If 2020, you know, has done anything, it's prepared us for the absolute worst. So I say bring it on 2021. Um, I have some exciting things and projects lined up for 2021 that I am so excited for you guys to finally find out about and see. And I love you guys. Happy New Year! Mwah, mwah, mwah. Cheers, babe. Sorry, I've been watching a lot of Love Island, so I say babe a lot now.